jail. So I hope everybody's doing well. Yeah. yeah. You guys are doing well, right? Yeah. And uh, just turn my camera on. Selfie. Yeah. With life oh, and responsibilities. Uh, Are your relationships strained or dying off with old spiritual friends? Oh, now, with spiritual friends, that's a good thing, amen? amen? Unless you're trying to help them become disciples and they want to repent. Right. Are you afraid of never having enough money? Yeah. Is your house messy? Oh, you have to go to a meeting. And does it also stress out the people around you? Wow. Today, I want, to I want to talk about something that will take all those worries away. Now, you're not at an infomercial meeting. I'm not going to try to sell you anything right here. But what I want to talk about is discipline. Bro. Tell us this really living life. I'm going to read a, a few little uh, scriptures right here for you. Okay. Preach it, bro. Come on, Mike. Come on, It says. Lazy hands make a man poor. Proverbs 10. But diligent hands bring wealth. The sluggard craves, Proverbs 13, and gets nothing. But the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. Do you see a man skilling his work? He will serve before kings. He will not serve before obscure men. Wow. 2 Peter 3. Right, so then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, wow, blameless, on. and at peace with Him. Amen? Amen. See, right now, maybe these scriptures are making you feel a little convicted. Come on, bro. And if they are, that's good. Yep. That means that this message is for you. Wow. Dang. What God is asking you to do is to make discipline your priority in life. Amen? Amen. And a lot of times, if you're feeling convicted and you know you're undisciplined, then you might already feel defeated as I'm saying these words. Wow. But don't feel defeated. Because that simply just adds to more stuff you got to do and makes you more undisciplined. All right? So don't feel defeated. But what you got to do is start defeating your lack of discipline. And what that means is you're going to take it at one point. You got to start somewhere, but you got to start defeating the lack of discipline in your life. Amen? Amen. If you will then it'll make this week the best week of your life. Yep. Amen. This week will be amazing. Wow. As you start defeating your lack of discipline, that stop you from doing so much that God has planned for you. Amen? Amen. We're going to talk about a few things with discipline. But really, the biggest thing is to understand that we're here to build something awesome for God, and any building takes discipline. Let's go to Luke chapter 14. Come on, Mike. Alright, 
Verse 28, you of course know this. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Oh, come on. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? For if he lays the foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him. Yeah. Saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. That's a ridicule really part. God says in this passage, he starts it off and says, right there in verse 26, if anyone comes to me, here's what they got to do. And this is one of the things. Anybody coming to Jesus has to understand it's kind of like building a tower. Yeah. Right. It's like building a tower. Have you ever watched something be built? Yes. Have you ever seen the work of a construction worker? Yeah. Yes. It's the same thing every day. You grab the same shovel, you dig the same hole, you put the same brick in place. It's consistent, monotonous work that takes basically just doing it over and over again, and it takes a little bit of discipline. Right. Yeah. Building a building is not complicated. Amen, everybody? Amen. So what we're doing is, to be a disciple, we got to understand, it's not complicated. Amen? Amen? That makes even the person to your right or left can figure it out. Does that encourage you? And so, since we're building this building, we got to see, okay, it takes some discipline to make it happen. It takes discipline to build the kingdom of God. Amen? And it even takes discipline to build your own life. And so, discipline is, a, is an awesome thing. And it's something that really is going to change us and make us what we need to be for this world. I want to read you a book real quick. We're not going to read the whole thing. That's your job. But if you've ever tried to read this book, you know what I'm talking about. It takes discipline just to finish it. It's called The Disciplined Life. Read it, bro. Come on. It says, God will not look you over for medals, but for scars. That is another way of saying he wants no pampered saints. In today's turbulent world, God needs disciplined men and women. Soldiers, tried, true, and battle ready. The plight of modern man may be summed up in his striving for the road of self-indulgence. The way of least resistance is his goal. Sacrifice, discipline, restraint, these words present ideas that are hard to come by in our generation. With bold death strokes, this guy writes about it. I commend the reading of the discipline line to all persons who in an age of weakness would remain strong, in a time of confusion would retain their sense of direction, and in a period of humanism and doubt would cling to those imperishable values of the spirits. Amen? Amen. Let's look at 1 Timothy. Come on. Come on. Sorry, 2 Timothy, verse 1, chapter 1. Chapter 1, verse 7. It says, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity. Amen? amen? Now, if you really believe that, you should say amen really loud right there. Amen! Self-discipline. See, you know you're close to God when there's a lot of self-discipline in your life. And you know this scripture, most of you. It's all about self-discipline. And that's the one thing that's the hardest for you to fight. Yet it's one of the ways Satan has the biggest victory in this kingdom and in San Francisco church today. You lack discipline. You know it. And you tolerate it. And so here this week, if you want it to be a week that you've never seen before, you got to see one thing. I'm going to change. I'm going to start defeating my lack of discipline. Amen? Amen? First way to defeat your lack of discipline is to start getting open about it. Let's go to James 5. It is awesome. 
is that you have a lot of people who want different things from you. Amen. Even yourself wants a lot of different things. Yes. And the person who's running around distracted and unproductive is a person who says yes to everything. Wow. And they don't think because they're people pleasers wow. and they just say yes, 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 yes. Oh, wow. And before you know it, they're the most undisciplined and unreliable people because they haven't thought through if they can actually hold it down. Amen. Now I'm not saying say no to the brother that needs your help spiritually. Oh, right. Amen? Amen. Say, no bro, I don't have time for you because I'm too busy with my job. Oh, wow. That's unspiritual and unloving. Amen? Amen. Amen. But when you say no to something, is it really no? Come on. Is your no, no? Mm -hmm. oh. no. Discipline requires saying no. Thanks, yes. Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> I think for our lives, there's things we have to cut out. Yeah. 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 You know, in a world full of media, with Netflix and oh, Amazon Prime oh, and Redbox. Thank you. Sometimes you gotta say no when it gets late. So does your no be no? Do you say, okay, one more, just 20 more minutes, and that's it. And then 20 turns into 40, turns into two hours.
When you know how Jesus prayed, you know that what carrying his cross took was a great prayer life. Amen? Let's go to Matthew 26. Before Jesus carried the cross, there's something that a lot of times we miss. What gave him the strength to do it? Right. Great point, bro. It says, verse 36, Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him. And he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said that my soul is overwhelmed to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell on his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he referred, returned to see his disciples and found them sleeping. Man. Could you men not keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Yeah. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it's not possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he found like, them again, them sleeping, because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Right. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look. The hour is near, and the Son of Man is betrayed in the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. See, Jesus says, listen, the Spirit's will, the body's weak. Watch and pray so that you don't fall into temptation. Amen. See, Jesus says, you've got to follow me and carry your cross too. But one thing that we forget is that Jesus, in order to carry his cross, had an awesome prayer life. Wow. Yeah. Not just in the morning, but late at night, because he knew it took self-denial to follow God's will. Right. Guys, discipline, same exact thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's See, for some of us, we think we deny ourselves because we don't lust at girls. Uh, <laughs> we think we are self-denying because we don't get angry. Mm. And yet, there's still the greatest obstacle of it all. Yeah. Your lack of discipline. Yeah. See, we think, oh, I'm, I'm a Christian because I don't do the really bad things. I don't curse, don't smoke, don't drink, don't do drugs, come to church all the time, don't lust, got a little accountability program on my computer. I'm good to go, and yet we're living an undisciplined life. We're not men or women of our words. We don't come up with a plan. We're inconsistent. We're undisciplined. See, I want to challenge your discipleship right here. You think you're a disciple because of a checklist, and yet your life is still totally undisciplined. You can't go to bed on time, and you can't wake up on time. You can't get done the things you say you're going to get done. You can't focus on really holding down a schedule. You can't, for some of you, even keep a job. And what is the problem? It's that you lack discipline. Your biggest obstacle. Come on. Come See, the Bible's clear. Death is the reward for an undisciplined life. There is only a, an amount of time that God will endure your undiscipline until he finally cuts you off. And as an undisciplined person, this is overwhelming. And you got to say, okay, i got to start defeating my lack of discipline. Amen. I'm going to start battling this. i got to do whatever it takes to not give in to my laziness, Come on. Come on. to my self-indulgence. And i got to make sure I'm a disciplined man. Amen? Amen. Amen? It takes accountability. It takes following Jesus and praying and saying, all right, God, help me. Yes. Please. See, this is a cross that's too big for you to bear. If you're still undisciplined, it's too much for you. There's only one way to overcome something bigger than you. It's by going to God. Amen. Here with your discipline, you have to say, okay, I will rely on God to change me as a person and to make me different. Come on. 
and to start relying on God to make me a disciplined person. Amen? Amen. So here, what does Jesus do in the garden? He goes after the biggest thing first. That's a good thing to follow with your discipline. The first thing to attack is the hardest thing. Come on. Amen? Is it, it, don't we do the opposite? When we have a project due, we just start cleaning stuff? Yeah. I can't get this project done. My house is a mess. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh, I still got to call these people back before I start cleaning. So I can't do that. Oh, I got to go to the bathroom. Can't start cleaning. Yeah. Ever had somebody in your household do that? Yeah. Right when cleaning day comes, they're nowhere to be found. And then they have to go make some phone calls. See, that wasn't Jesus in the garden. He didn't say, okay, first we've got to have a deep group, guys, and then I'm going to go pray about the cross. He just said, I'm going straight for the hardest thing possible. For us, we got to pick out the most difficult obstacle in our life. And attack it head That's on. Right. And say, this is my biggest, biggest enemy right here in discipline. I'm going to go after it with all my hearts. Wow. Amen? Yeah. you got to choose what is it and say, okay, I'm going to go after it first. Maybe it's literally just saying, I'm going to go to bed on time. <laughs> For some of us, we hated bedtimes as a kid. Yes. Very much. I hated 9.30 being my point where I had to go lay down. <laughs> wanted to stay up as long as I could. And so now as an adult, the temptation can come. I'm just going to stay up as long as I want because my parents aren't in my room anymore. Yeah. Now if you cheer, you need to repent. Yeah. Or maybe God will put you back in the same apartment as your Understand. We gotta pick the hardest thing and say, at all costs, yeah. I gotta embrace the pain of brushing my teeth and flossing before I go to Come on, bro. And then I'm gonna go to bed at 10 p.m. and wake up at 5:30. And I'm gonna say no to that extra show. Come on. Uh, Amen? Yeah. And even that ice cream. Oh. 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 I'm going to say it now. Why? Because I want to get up early and spend time with God before the day gets crazy. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. And God will bless that disciplined life. Yeah. It's what this world needs the most. In a, in a world of confusion with no direction, yeah. disciples need, above all things, to have a disciplined direction in their life. Amen? Yeah. Come on. Let's look at a cool scripture in Proverbs 6. Okay. Come on, Come on. 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 Go to the end, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler. Yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will come on you like a band. And scarcity like an armed man. The Bible's clear. If poverty's come on you, it's because you're undisciplined. You blame everything around you, but the Bible says it's you. And it says, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a little field trip. And we're going to go look at an ant. 
And the ant is going to teach us the way we need to be. Come on, bro. That's awesome. And when you watch an ant, there's nobody barking orders at it. Yeah. It's not moving half-heartedly like, oh, I hate this. Yeah, that's that's right. The ant has a mission. It has one purpose. And it's doing it with all its heart. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. I mean, ants are pretty noble little animals. Yeah. Yeah. Now, their brains are super small. Meaning they're not very smart. Amen? That's a state? So, anyway, you don't have a small brain. You guys But there's something you can learn even from the ants. Life's not complicated. Right. Do what you are built to do with all your heart. And if you need somebody telling you what to do, you're an idiot. Because even an ant doesn't need that. An ant says, I'm doing it with all my heart, and I don't need anybody barking commands. You can even find ants all by themselves in the middle of nowhere, working with all their hearts. Nobody's watching, nobody knows what they're doing, but they're cranking. Learn from the ant. And what does it say will happen? You'll be lost. Right. See, there's some fools in this room who don't who think there's a shortcut, who don't work hard when people aren't watching, and who think that God isn't seeing everything you do. It says no. God's watching every move you make. He sees your life. <laughs> he knows if you're working hard. There's a uh, a really cool study that just happened. All right. It was at MIT and at Harvard. Okay. And these guys, I don't know if some of them read Proverbs 6 6, but they decided to build robots based on ants. Wow. And on termites. Basically the same thing. I'll read you this little article, okay? Right. Yeah. Come on, bro. Go ahead. It says termite robots build castles with no human help. Wow. It says a shoe sized robot shaped like a VW Beetle and built by a 3D printer. Scuttles and circles on a Harvard lab bench. Its hooked wheels, good for climbing and grasping, also let it trundle on the flat. As I watch, it scoops a styrofoam block onto its back and then scrabbles across a layer of already deposited blocks to flip the new one into place. An impressive feat, especially given that it does this without human control. Using simple rules about its environment to build a whole structure. The robot is making a tower wow. like a termite would. If you want to build underwater, if you want to build a Mars base, it's going to be very difficult, dangerous, and expensive to send people, says Justin Werfel of the Wiss Institute for Biological Inspired Engineering at Harvard University. <laughs> but if you can send a team of robots to build a habitat as the first step, that's the really long-term vision. Wow. To spur his swarm into action, Werfel gives the robots a mathematical model of the structure to be built, say a pyramid. Each robot uses that model to calculate where it will place the next block it picks up. Moving on to another spot if its planned drop-off has already been completed by another robot. It uses nothing but basic ultrasound and infrared sensors, as well as an internal accelerometer to figure out how many blocks it has climbed and where it is in relation to the structure it is building. Wow. As well as pyramids, the robots can build castles, and towers. So here, I'll read the last part. It says, in the short term, Riffle says, terms like robots could be used to build levees out of sandbags, working through night and day without human help to build flood protections. The scenarios where you want to use robots rather than humans are described as the 3Ds, dirty, dangerous, and dull, he says. The group has already used a modified version of the terms robots to drag and stack bags of rice to make a wall. Here, you're saying, well, where are you going with this? Well, these scientists are from the robots. Well, learn from the ant to make the robots. And the Bible commands us to learn from the ant as well. Yeah. Isn't that intense? These scientists came up with this revolutionary idea wow. by going to the ant and copying it. Wow. And for us guys, if we can program a robot to think like an ant, then we surely can program our own minds to be the same way. Right. Yeah. If you have you ever seen a termite mount? Yeah. yeah. They can get like up to here. Yeah. And nobody came up with the design. There's no architect. They just did what they were designed by God to do. Amen. Build something. Amen. 
The kingdom is what you're designed to build. Come on. Yeah. And here it says it's a tower. And God has given you a job. And guys, it's awesome that when you just do the job, God builds the kingdom. Come on. You don't have to figure out the architecture of it. Amen? Amen. You don't have to figure out what are we going to do. You just say, I'm going to build. Yeah. And God puts the places in order. Yeah. God puts all the pieces where they're supposed to be. Here, guys, we got to understand something. When we are focused on just building and being a spiritual ant, saying, I don't need anybody to tell me what to do. I'm sharing my faith. Yeah. I'm just doing it. Because I know by just obeying God's law, God will build the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Right. It's awesome. Last night we were out there buying a, a drink before we had our study with Peter, and Christian just starts sharing with the guy next to us. Nice. It was just Christian's spiritual ant like tendency to say, share my faith. And that's genius. Yeah. It's genius. Because now Peter's life has completely changed around. Yeah. And he's getting baptized because of Christian's convictions. Yeah. And so here, you guys don't need to, we don't need to say, oh, i got to be a genius. All you got to do is deny yourself yeah. and be like the ant. Right. Are you a sluggard spiritually? Did you share your faith every day last week? and invite people out. It's an ant-like procedure. That's very simple. People around you you don't know, you stop and say, hey, I'd like to invite you out to my church. Or let me share my life with you real quick. It, is it that simple? Yeah. Yeah. But some of us are so smart that we don't share our faith. And I'm being sarcastic. But we think, no, my life's too busy. Well, that's because you're just not disciplined. See, the disciplined person says, no, I got two minutes to do what I need to do right yeah. now. And if Christian didn't have that quality, Peter would be here. Mm -hmm. Right. It is about you making time this week to say, I'm going to go talk to people. Yeah. Even throughout my day. I am deciding because I focused and planned on it this morning to share my faith with the people around. Right? Mm -hmm. And as you just do the work of the ant, God builds the building. Mm -hmm. Your ministry will not move forward until you start work. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not about everybody else that's in your ministry. It's not about when they're going to start doing it. Amen? Amen. Yeah. The ant doesn't think, when, when all the other ants start doing this, I'm going to start working at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. The ant's just thinking, this is my job, i got to do this. Right? And so, I want to encourage you, this week, to pray about this. To know, this takes self-denial, amen? Yeah. Sharing your faith sometimes takes you denying yourself. Yeah. So that means you got to pray. And when you pray about this, to make a decision and say, I will defeat my lack of discipline. I will share my faith today. I will talk to people and help them out. And eventually, over time, God will put the pieces in place for you to change the life of someone. Amen? Amen. It might happen this week. But until you start doing it, it's never going to happen. Yeah, come on. And if you're the person who's looking at everybody else, then you're the biggest issue of everybody. Yeah. You just got to make a decision. I'm getting out there. By myself. And do the work. Amen. Now, I want to encourage you, when more ants get together, it's a lot more fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, on campus, I mean, it's cool when it's just me and Aaron, right? But it's a lot more cool when it's Christian, Elliot, Jaden, Peter... Who else am I missing? Nick, oh, Rashad, Cho, Terrence, thank you. Come on. Thanks a lot. When we're all out there together on campus, guys, whoa. Yeah. I was with Charmaine and we were studying uh, on Thursday with, with Nadia. We were just going through some scriptures. It was 10 p.m. We were in the library. And I thought, how cool would it be if all 14 disciples at SS State were on campus right now? Yeah. 
Yeah. Would that be sick? Yeah. Everybody in the library on an ant-like mission for God to say, let's just find some, some people to help. I'm just going to go do my spiritual ant-like work and just talk to people. And then I'm going to watch what God does as we go. Yeah. So at SO State, I want to put something in effect right here. Come on, SO State. It's called the Gideon Effect. Go. We'll study this out as a ministry, but what does that mean? It means that there's only though there's a few of us, if we're all consistent, we're going to do, have an awesome impact mm -hmm. at SF State. Come on. Yeah. And so what that means is for us to saturate the campus with information about our group. I don't know if you've ever gone to the bathroom in Cesar Chavez, but there's chalkboards in the bathrooms. Yeah. Yes. You know what would be cool? is on every chalkboard. For there to say, hey, Tuesday night, 7 p.m., come play Frisbee with our church group. Come on. Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> Everybody sits down. And I don't want to talk about the rest. <laughs> but they want to read what's on the board. Come on. Amen? What about on every table that somebody eats lunch at or studies at? And there's a flyer about Rise Campus Ministry. Come on. And then when you go and you share with somebody, and you say, oh, yeah, I'm a part of Rise. You're like, oh, yeah, I read about that group all the time. Yeah. Guys, that's easy to do because it's called the Gideon Effect. Yeah. The Gideon Effect is he only had 300 guys at verse 300,000. Yeah. But each one of them took a lantern and a trumpet and pretended like they were a thousand people. Wow. And so it looked like 300,000 people. Yeah. For us as disciples, if we are all putting this stuff out everywhere, it'll look like yeah. we're a group of thousands at SF States. Mm -hmm. And guys, that's the kind of impact we want to have on this campus, amen? amen? To say, hey, let's have this effect where it seems like we're everywhere. Wherever somebody turns their eye, there's a flyer. There's something written. There's somebody sharing with them about it. And just to say, we are going to saturate this campus so much that we'll become a household name at SF States. Rise Campus Ministries. Amen? Amen. And it'll be really cool when you say, oh yeah, I'm with that group. And they're like, yeah, I read about it every day. Is that awesome? But what does that take? It takes being like a spiritual ant, having some discipline. Amen? Let's look at uh, Mark 1. Verse 35, we know this one. It says, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone's looking for you. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That's why I've come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. So here we see Jesus doing the work of a spiritual man. Wakes up early, has a very quiet time. Goes and starts preaching the word. And so you see, number one, the first part for us to have an awesome week is commitment. Commitment to waking up early. Come on. And saying, amen. I'm going to wake up and have a great time with God, just like Jesus. Second is when you're praying to plan out your day. And say, okay, what am I doing today? What does my day have? And pray for those things. Amen. Amen. You don't want to do things you haven't prayed for. When you pray for that, God gives you victory. Yeah. Next is, you want to stay clean. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Because a disciplined life shows a godly life. Well. And some people even see cleanliness is next to godliness. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And here, when you're, I mean, when the brothers' households start getting clean, those guys start getting a lot more ambitious for God. Amen? Amen. Okay. Because they thought, we could have people over our house <laughs> and do things for God. And instead of our house embarrassing us and just trying to say, hey, sorry about this, we can bring people over and help them be inspired by our lives as disciples. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And I hope that inspires you guys to keep it. <laughs> Next thing, the Bible talks about physical training being a sub yeah. Come on. Discipline means having physical activity in your life. Yeah. If you can be able to master your body's weaknesses, oh. then it gives you the basic training to master your spiritual weaknesses as well. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. 
And I want to encourage you to start being physically active. Whether it's a three mile prayer walk every morning, or if it's going to the gym every day, but say, I'm going to get in shape because it's going to teach me spiritual qualities that will help me be a disciplined person. Amen? Come on, bro. And lastly, to plan to share your faith and to plan to encourage other disciples. Really, the three things we got to do as spiritual hands is share our faith, walk with God, and encourage each other. Amen? Amen? And as you're doing that, things are going to go awesome. But you find those are the three things Satan attacks the most, right? Yeah. He attacks your quiet time, he attacks your relationships, and he attacks your boldness to share your faith. Yeah. And so those are why. Because those are the basic ant-like things we've got to do to build the kingdom of God. Right. But when the ants all get fired up about doing the basic things, the kingdom starts multiplying. Amen? And as ants for God, amen, amen, we should be fired up and say, hey, I do three things. I walk with God, I share my faith, and I encourage the other disciples. Yeah. Let's look at... Uh, well, going off of that, encouraging other disciples, I just want to bring up what Brianna did for uh, Valentine's Day. Come on. Come on, she made every brother yeah. a handmade bag full of candy with their names written on it and pictures. Wow. Every brother in the campus ministry. And that, like, blew it over the top for all of the guys. I mean, they were taking pictures, posting on Facebook, super encouraged. I guess Aaron just ate his whole bag right there. <laughs> If you want to invite Aaron over for dinner, that'd probably be a good idea. <laughs> but here, just saying, man, when we encourage one another, it builds the kingdom. And even today, you felt some of that joy from Friday nights. Yeah. Some of that encouragement, some of that love. To say, if we all do that, it just raises the love and the, and the radiance of this church even yeah. more. Amen? Yeah. Let's look uh, at Ecclesiastes 10. This is a cool scripture. Oh, it just says in verse 2, The heart of the wise inclines the right, but the heart of the fool the left. Even as he walks along the road, the fool lacks sense and shows everyone how stupid he is. <laughs> what does this mean? It means that when there's no shortcut to being wise, there's no shortcut to being disciplined. And here, there's no shortcut for a disciplined life. We have to say, okay, I have to defeat my lack of discipline. And what does that mean? Well, the benefit of it is that people will see it in the way you even walk down the streets. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I mean, there's times where you can look at somebody walking and you can know if they're smart or if they're foolish. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You can say, that person is so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Just by the way they walk. That's what the Bible says. It's because foolishness exposes is exposed even in little things. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm not saying judge people. But I am saying that foolishness is exposed by the little things in life. Yeah. And so little things show who you really are. Cleaning your room. You're, you're planning to encourage people. Showing up early. All those little things show a big picture of who you really are. And it's, it's hard, as easy as it sounds. Guys, just get here 15 minutes early. Come on. For some of us, it's the, it would be the biggest victory. Yeah. <laughs> it would literally change your life the way you have to think to make that happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've got to, it would change your heart. You'd have to discipline yourself to say no to stuff to get out the door at the right time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It would change you. And so sometimes those simple things can really be the hardest things to overcome. But when you do, it teaches you lessons that will help you soar and build God's kingdom. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, lack of discipline is obvious. And in the end, we got to say, okay, let's start defeating our lack of discipline. Amen. Brothers, that means not indulging in movies or video games too much. Amen. It means you got to say no and you got to come up with a time limit. It means not overeating for some of us. For others, it means making sure you plan out quality time with your spouse every single week. For all of us, it means saying, you got to spend time with God. Some of us have not moved forward spiritually because we don't go after our quiet times. Some of us studying the Bible are still where we're at because we're not going after our relationship with God. 
Yeah. We haven't prayed deeply and hard through the things we got to pray about. Yeah. And so for us, going after this discipline, guys, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. You will stop gaining weight. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You won't be constantly overwhelmed. Yeah. Because you'll have a plan to get through things. Yeah. Old relationships will grow stronger Woo. instead of dying off. Yeah. Yeah. You won't have to fear about finances because you'll have a good understanding of where they're at. Yeah. Your house will be clean. Yeah. And you'll love having people come over. Yeah. And each week will be totally different from the last one. Yeah. Because you'll watch as God uses you to build his kingdom. Amen? Yeah. You won't be constantly stressed out. You'll be at peace. And you'll bring peace to even the people in your household. Amen? Amen? Yeah. And so what is this? This is defeating your lack of discipline. Come on. I want to read one last quote from A Disciplined Life. Yes. Go ahead. Read it. Go ahead. And it's a little long, and then we'll close it down. It says, discipline is what moderns need the most and want the least. <laughs> Too often young people who leave home Students who quit school. Oh. Husbands and wives who seek divorce. Church members who neglect services. Employees who walk out on their jobs are simply trying to escape discipline. The true motive may often be camouflaged by a hundred excuses. But behind the flimsy front is the hardcore of aversion to restraint and control. Much of our restlessness and instability can be traced to this basic fault in modern character. Our overflowing asylums and hospitals and jails are but symptoms of an undisciplined age. There may be many secondary causes, and there may be many secondary cures, but somewhere behind them all is the need for discipline. The kind of discipline needed is far deeper than the rule of alarm clocks and time cards. It embraces self-restraint, courage, perseverance, and resiliency as the inner panoply of the soul. Amen? Wow. Guys, as we become those spiritual ants of discipline for God, we'll see God's kingdom built and to see this world change for our Lord, for God's honor. Amen, guys? Let's go to the room. Thank you. Sing the one. 